I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, and this is the Doctor's Guide Podcast, raw and unfiltered, bringing to you some really cool insights and action steps that you can take to optimize your health. And how is this any different than any of the other podcasts? Well, there's so many podcasts out there, so how do you actually choose if it's right for you? And that's the big problem with so much information and misinformation out there, because a lot of it might be great, but some of it might not be so great because it's not related to you. And so that's the biggest issue that I find that we have today, navigating the world of all this high tech and expensive tech, and as I call it, advanced tech and the I'm confused tech, because you buy this tech, you spend all this money, even if it's a supplement and it does absolutely nothing. Because part of the challenge is, is that maybe you're not making the right decision because it's context dependent, which means that it's either right or not right for you, depending on your particular situation, or what's even more important is you don't have a guide, a guide that can help you discern, you know, if these things are going to work out for you or not. Because here's the truth, as I like to put it. And again, on this show, we may trigger some people because of the questions that we ask or the situations that we come up with. And quite frankly, if you are triggered, then I'm kind of excited because that's you realizing that there is a pain here, there's a hurt here that needs to be resolved. So you do need to be listening. And in today's world where we're just so intolerant of everybody else's stuff, you know, the truth is it's the work that we have to do within ourselves. And that's not something I've made up, all these incredible geniuses and in personal growth, development, you know, becoming the best version of ourselves all say the same thing. And as Byron Katie likes to put it, you know, the pain or the hurt that you're feeling is actually your work to do. And so the point that I'm getting at is this, is that you've got the opportunity to optimize your health because we no longer have an excuse to be sick because that information is out there, the technology is out there. Most importantly, the amazing individuals like the guests on my show are out there to support you. And so it's your job to understand that it's your responsibility to find out what it is that you can do to optimize your health, not delegate it, eradicate it, or abdicate it to a doctor because the doctor is only going to prescribe you drugs and, and surgery. And at times that's very relevant. At times it's very, very important. But what about those times to actually be proactive? You know, people like to call it, use the term preventive, but I prefer the term proactive to ensure that you've got the right lifestyle, you're eating the right kinds of foods and all sorts of other things. So I don't know you personally, but I do know the process by which we can make better decisions. And so this show is all about role playing where one presents with a problem and the other is going to guide them to some sort of resolution in about six or 10 minutes. And so clearly it's not a lot of time, but I want you to listen in, lean in, and witness yourself in this process. And this may be something personal to my guests, may not, may be something they've experienced with someone else. But the point of the matter is, these are real life situations that you can easily relate to and recognize that there is hope, there is a solution, as long as you then begin to do the homework and find the right people to support you today. So I'd like to um, invite my two amazing guests, uh, Kendra and Daniel, uh, they will each introduce themselves briefly, and then we'll go into the six-minute role play. Kendra will present with a problem. Um, Daniel will guide her through that uh, resolution. And then after that, we just simply will unpack it for about you know 10 or 15 minutes. So Kendra, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I am Kendra Kanoy, and I have developed a method called Accelerated Regeneration, which helps people with joint pain specifically, get out of that joint pain and heal naturally without taking any more pills, shots, or going under the knife. And this was, this has been an evolution in my life over the past 15 years. And it started with a car accident that I was in, in my late twenties. And I had a hip, hip injury that bothered me for two years and I saw all the modalities, acupuncture, massage, physical therapy, and nothing was healing it even at my younger age. And I finally said, what is going on? Why is my body not healing? So I went on my own journey as a lot of us uh, health coaches and practitioners do. 
and discovered the diet and lifestyle tools that sent off huge light bulb moments in my head for how we should truly be caring for our bodies. And I have been teaching that ever since and now incorporate more lifestyle, more mindset and um, other aspects into my, my coaching and my, my serving other people. I so that's it. about me. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for that. And once again, you know, as I like to often say, and a little bit of tongue in cheek at times is that, you know, the, the people that are leading that should be leading the way of our personal health and wellness should be the doctors who've undergone all that education, but it's really all those non-doctors like Kendra, like Daniel that are leading the way oftentimes because they suffered something and they came up with a resolution only because conventional medicine wasn't offering it. Again, not knocking conventional medicine. I'm a doctor myself. So please understand that. Tons of respect for my colleagues out there. But in this new millennium, a lot of things are different, including AI. So it's time that we started looking at things differently, and which is the reason for this podcast too. So thank you for the work that you do, Kendra. It's, it's amazing. Um, you know, accelerated regeneration, super cool. All right, Daniel. Hello, my name is Daniel, and I'm with naturalseizurecontrol.com, where I help people stop seizures naturally without more medication, without more surgery or more electrical implants in your neck. And a lot of people are having more and more trouble with uncontrolled seizures and medication only works about 40% of the time. So there are tens and hundreds of millions of people that are um, stuck, you know, dealing with this. So uh, I bring all that I've learned personally to the table, which is started with my grandma, first grandma seizure at 10 years old until in my mid twenties, I figured out how to stop my seizures naturally. And I've been seizure free and medication free for the past five years. And it's absolutely remarkable, not just being seizure free and being able to drive and being able to travel and being able to raise a family, but also having a, a brain and a life that's working at full capacity and having that hand-eye coordination that lets me compete um, in international pinball tournaments and um, and enjoy, you know, waking up in the morning instead of dreading uh, all the tasks I have to do. And, you know, when am I going to squeeze in my next nap? And when is, you know, instead of managing life, I'm really living life. So that's what I do is truly transform people's lives from the inside out. Yeah, I'm totally blown away by your story, Daniel. It's just so incredibly amazing. Actually, both your stories healed yourselves in, in such a beautiful way. Um, but epilepsy is, is, you know, something that so many people are suffering from. Um, actually, joint pain is, uh, or, uh, in fact, by the orthopedic counselor specialty, uh, orthopedic or, uh, arthritis and joint pain and joint issues is a major crisis throughout the world. So you both are dealing with some very critical things in the most incredible way. So thank you. Thank you both for that. All right. So Kendra, you've got a problem. Um, I know Daniel doesn't know what that is yet. And once again, for the listener, I mean, it, uh, the preframe for this, this is, this is for you, for you to lean in to figure out, okay, is this about me? Do I see myself in this problem, in this challenge? And, you know, here's a way that I can navigate this, giving you hope and clarity towards the end. Kendra, you got six minutes. So Daniel, I, had a roommate for a short amount of time and I moved in with the mother and two young adult children and uh, Sebastian apparently had um, epilepsy his whole life for a long time at least and I was given a very quick oh, by the way, if he has a seizure and hits his head, make sure you roll him on his side and check that he doesn't swallow his tongue and I thought, what this is this is a lot of information that seems life or death that I don't know anything about and I would just you know because some some people don't know a lot of people with epilepsy or maybe I don't think that I do and so hearing a little bit about what you do I'm curious you know he wasn't working at the time he was I think 20 21 years old um it didn't, you know, I, 
I just am curious what's possible for somebody in that situation and how, if, if, if he's someone that I might be able to refer to you. Absolutely. So first I'll tell you a little bit more about epilepsy and include a little bit of my perspective. And second, I'll tell you a little bit more about what we could do. And um, it's so great that you're asking that question and nobody even asks, you know, what else can we do? It's just people with epilepsy. It's um, one of countless um, un incurable diseases. It's not something to be reversed or stopped. It's just something to be managed. Manage the symptoms as best as possible and just cope with life at that level. So I'm glad that you're asking if something can be done um, in looking outside of the most commonly presented information. And I'll share a little bit more about epilepsy. It's one of those things that is completely undetectable in somebody unless you happen to catch them in a seizure because 99% of their life, they're operating normally, they're functioning normally, their brain is working normally. But at that, you know, that unlikely scenario of having a seizure, then their life is completely disrupted. And a lot of times there's a post ictal, a post seizure phase where confusion, rage, anger, um, but typically sleeping, like my record is 30 hours straight. So I woke up on a completely different calendar day. Um, and that's really disruptive to life, as you can imagine, um, especially if you can't feel them coming on. And so having your roommate with seizures is a little bit strange and scary of all these unknowns, right? Of, you know, oh, if he swallows his tongue or roll him on his side and oh, no. <laughs> but most of the time, it's not a it's not the end of the world just being a loving supportive person not treating them like an alien like they can't do anything is always helpful and um i want to jump right into some of the ways that can be helped now it's a little challenging working with a condition where somebody feels unsafe like having epilepsy and not knowing when your next seizure is going to be there's always this little piece of subconscious PTSD. Like I experienced something weird. I'm afraid of it coming back. So the things we can do is see if he's able and willing to make the lifestyle changes that make a big impact on brain health, on seizures, on epilepsy. So I'll ask you on a scale of one to 10, how, if there was a magic switch that can be pulled, um, but it required one or two hours a day of work, changing things in the categories of diet and what he eats, um, also on oxygen, how he breathes and his posture and how, he, how much outdoor time he has and et cetera. And finally, how much, he, how much mindfulness and awareness he has on his stress levels and how he, his relationship with his, himself, his relationship with his epilepsy, if it's negative, if it's ruining his life, or so to ask you on a scale of one to 10, how willing is he to put in one to two hours of work on a daily basis if after a couple months, he can be completely seizure free, 10 being the most uh, eager? Yeah, I would say a 10 because, um, he and his mom were very involved in landmark coaching landmark. Can't remember what that, you know, but it's that. Yeah. And they were in the leadership roles where they were help facilitating. And so I know, and what I loved about my experience living there was that there it, personal growth and taking a deep dive into ourselves and helping each other reflect was a big part of our experience in the house. So I know just from, from that perspective that he would definitely be open to doing anything. And it, it was, it, it didn't fit that he wasn't working at the time uh, because he did seem so, um, you know, and excited for life and, and, and empowered and trying to better himself. And so that's why it, it, it seemed a bit of an anomaly to me, um, but not knowing enough about epilepsy and, 
only knowing that, yeah, that these scary things could happen at any moment and he didn't drive. Um, so he was reliant upon his family, which is why he still lived there. So yeah, I would say he would be a 10. Fantastic. I, I ask because it's the number one most important criteria of anybody that I work with and anybody that wants change and is going to actually get that change is that desire to to actually change who they are, to actually change their relationship to their social circles and how they eat in social environments and how they behave in social environments and how the story they tell themselves if they're if they're you know at their workplace and they're like yeah oh, I'm not good enough and you know they're just kind of stressed out and like oh I have all these secrets and everything's festering and then they have that subconscious stress that I mention all the time where people don't really realize that all these little stressors exist without them knowing it and as long as somebody has that willingness to change in that consistency of like okay even if I'm going to spend 15 minutes every day things don't change overnight meaningful things do not change overnight a muscular physique does not you cannot notice a change from one day to the next no matter how many hours if you work out five hours you're not going to wake up the next day and see a big change so the exact same thing happens with brain health um, and many other chronic ailments is that consistency can you stick to 50, 15 or 60 minutes a day or whatever, can you stick to that for a week straight, a month straight, two months straight without seeing any benefits? Because sometimes you have to build up the strength of your body, your different um, organ systems to a certain level where, bam, they finally switch on for the first time in five years and they start functioning. And then all of a sudden you have this, this breakthrough, this, wow, I'm having less than 10 seizures. Wow, I'm not having any seizures. Um, so that's kind of the magic window is, can you stick with this for a couple of weeks, a couple of months without attachment to like, oh, I don't have my instant gratification. And that's the hardest part of my job is we are in a, a century of where instant gratification has 100% taken over the entirety of the medical industry where everybody has lost all of the traditional knowledge we have back to you know Indians with herbal medicines and rituals and like prayer. And, um, you know, even as a lot of my favorite books are written 100, 150 years ago, they didn't have access to brain surgeries and all these, these uh, medications that we have. Um, so they were forced to look at any tool they had, and that's diet and lifestyle. That's basically all that exists. Um, but now that we're stuck in instant gratification, um, that's the one thing I look for is people's willingness to change in their consistency. So I'm glad you shared the, yeah, the situation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm curious, um, not knowing anything about his medications, but is there any, um, uh, mood or mindset side effects from, from the medication for epilepsy and seizures? Does Absolutely. There's, there's over 10, um, frequently prescribed anti-epileptic anti medications. Um, one is quite infamous. Uh, called Kepra, and it's called Kepra Rage. So people uh, have known to be arrested for having a seizure, and then they'll fight the police. The police show up and, you know, to help the person with the seizure or the ambulance shows up, and then they'll start throwing punches or um, extreme offensive curse words and just really, really, really unpleasant to be around. And it's because the brain is misfiring. It's having a, a seizure. It's having the after effects of a seizure. And so, yeah, that's that's... A, it's a sign that a seizure may be coming on, that a seizure just happened. And that's part of the challenge of working with this issue is um, learning how to read the body, learning how to respond properly and being understanding and patient with somebody dealing with epilepsy. They don't, they don't want to have seizures. They don't want to be a burden on other people. But um, if they have that desire and that consistency, they absolutely can dramatically change their life, if not reach a place of of uh, full fully restored brain health so it's Love really it. exciting let's let's wrap it up there um so kendra what was that for you um that was very interesting because i even having lived with him and gotten to know him in other aspects 
I just had an aha after the side effect of the rage is that I had a, I kept a distance from him and I thought consciously it was, it was because I didn't want him to have any issue around me. <laughs> I didn't want to have to be responsible for that. But I think now I'm realizing that energetically, um, yeah, that, that there was probably some, some emotions and, and anger, maybe things that I was sensing on that I just also wanted to keep my distance from. And it's interesting hearing some of, of what those side effects could be. So thank you. Thank you. Daniel, what was that for you? Awesome. Yeah, it was, it's, it's always interesting talking, um, translating what I, as an epileptic person, have felt and experienced. And then it's trying to translate that to another person and how to navigate, you know, they might be helping somebody else with epilepsy. And that's another challenging thing because it's like explaining color to a blind person. So now you have this problem of like, what we are experiencing in our mind is absolutely bizarre and difficult and unexplainable, but it's very powerful for me to, to have that scenario where I work on you know, every day and, and, and today as well to help people understand so they can get the help, you know, people just don't know that there's something they can do about it. So, right now, again, it's a testament to your ability, both of you, by the way, uh, to support and guide others because you've experienced it yourself when most doctors who are treating epilepsy, as an example, have not. And so the, it's a complete game changer, uh, no disrespect, disrespect to the docs, but the fact of the matter, having that experience, knowing what's possible, um, energetically, using your terms, Kendra, you're, you're, there's a transference of that energy to the other person because you absolutely believe what it is that you believe. Um, I got a very interesting insight just now and in, in recognizing, you know, as, as empathetic and aware as I like to think that I am, you know, not once have I ever really stopped because I, I've, I've worked with multiple people having epileptic insults. I, I help with a Tony Robbins organization with, you know, his big events. And there's occasionally, you know, people that have epileptic insults. And once again, I'm that one of the people to make sure that they're safe, they're taken care of. And then afterwards, you know, that they're absolutely taken care of, but not once have I really thought and stopped to think about, okay, what's this person really going through? I mean, all the emotions, all the thoughts you brought them up, Daniel, it's like, oh my gosh, I had never thought about any of those things. And so, you know, rather than, you know, judging in a negative way, somebody about what they have, I mean, clearly it's, it's a, um, the nerves, the, the brain waves are just going crazy in any given moment, just not a better way of describing it, I guess. And, and the body's just responding in a crazy way, but it has nothing to do with that person as an individual, as a human being, their humanness. And so it's important for us in the context of all conditions, I mean, even hip issues and pain and, you know, having, as you mentioned in the last, you know, uh, conversation about, you know, um, how traumas and relationships are related to hip pain. I mean, mm -hmm. we all need to stop and, and put into context what's this person really going through? How difficult is this? And, um, and yeah, so that was that was huge for me uh, as well. Um, I'm handing the mic over to both of you. I'll, we'll start off with Daniel. W what else do you want to unpack? What else do you want people to know about uh, all of this? Yeah, I just want people to know that it's it's my story is not super common. There's not it's not the 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 standard story. A lot of people live with this their whole life. A lot of people never question it. A lot of people never. Uh, sometimes they hear about a ketogenic diet or it, many approaches to naturally control epilepsy, but they don't have that consistency or belief or somebody that, you know, it's it's tremendous when somebody like me goes through something like a, a four minute mile or something, you know, that somebody you do it once and then it's easy for people to believe, okay, that's definitely possible. So I want people to know mm -hmm. that it's definitely possible. It always feels like it's not going to work for you. It always feels like it's too hard or it's impossible or I have some like asterisk or some special like case where it's you know i got some problem that nobody else has but trust me i guarantee you i felt that exact same way everybody that i work with feels that same way like i can't be helped it's too hard i'm too far gone 
it's never the case if you've got that desire and that consistency. Um, I'd like people to know that you can dramatically change your life guaranteed if you stick to it. Did I hear you correctly? You did the four minute mile? No. <laughs> oh, just, okay. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> and and just so people understand what, what Daniel was saying, for the longest time, people did not believe that they could break the one mile run in, in less than four minutes. And so for years and years and years, nobody actually broke it until um, one person finally did. I forget the name of the, the runner. And then within weeks, um, uh, others ensued once again. And there's an interesting experiment, which is not a fun experiment, by the way, but it's an experiment where they would put uh, rats into um, a tub of water and um, they would be, you know, drowning basically in this tub of water. And um, and after about 15, 16 minutes, they would just simply give up and they would then, I guess, die. Um, but if right before that moment that the, the experimenters would take them out of the water to, to let them know that they could survive and then they put them back in the water, Take a guess. I'm going to have both of you guess. Do you th how many hours do you think they continue to to wade in water? Would you Would you imagine? I Remember, would 15 guess. minutes after 15 minutes, you know they would just sink, right? But right beforehand, they would take them out, let them breathe for a moment. I don't know for how long they would let them breathe, but realize that they they're alive. Put them back in the water. How long do you think they would wade, wade in the water after that? Just take a guess. I think it's quite significant. I'd say an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Okay. What do you say, Kendra? Three hours. <laughs> 60. No. Six, zero, 60 hours. So knowing that you can survive, knowing that something is possible has such an incredible power on all of us. And so mm -hmm. we must all tap into that. Uh, Kendra, any other thoughts that you want to share? What's coming up from what Daniel's talking about us and when we were having our dialogue is is the commitment level and there's also an element of blind faith which you know on one hand it's like okay you don't necessarily want to go into any practitioner or any office and just be like I'll just do whatever you say but once you've done your due diligence and once you have committed to a process to work with someone like Daniel um, and I experience this with, with the people I help with joint pain and I tell them things might get worse before they get better, not necessarily with the pain sometimes, but like their gut might, mm -hmm. you know, they might become constipated when they switch their diet or their mood might take a digger, um, because there's emotional cleansing and detoxing that happens with all, you know, some of these shifts that you know, Daniel and I are, are making with people and it really is that like, stick with it. This is not an instant, you know, how many years have you suffered from epilepsy or how many years or months has your joint been giving you problem? It's not going to be a five, 10 day turnaround. It it's usually weeks to months, but then when, you know, once you get there, once you have that aha light bulb moment, there's going to be, you know, years of being able to any health thing that comes along, be like, oh, I had those tools that worked for that. My body's giving me an indicator that something else is wrong. Let me go back to these tools, tighten up on them. And, you know, it, it's just, it's so empowering for people, but having, you gotta like, there's a white knuckle phase, I call it, you know, and it's, it's like getting off sugar, for example, right? It's, you know, it is like detoxing from cocaine or something. And so there's just that time where you got to get it out of the house. Don't go anywhere, <laughs> you know, whatever the thing is, but having that, that commitment and faith in, in the process and in the, the partner that you've chosen to, you know, hold your hand through it being Daniel and I in our various um, niches. So that, that is an important thing. And again, it comes down to, you know, as Winston Churchill said, never, never, never give up. And mm -hmm. so you can't give up um, because if you give up, then then you lose out. But the, the, the challenge is, is that getting the right information, 
and obviously getting the right accountability partner or, or guide that's going to help you. And, and again, that's the biggest challenge. You know, too many times people think they know what they're talking about when they don't. Um, and then, um, but trust your intuition, you know, trust your body. Your body is telling you what's going on. And um, you already know many of the answers that you need to have. But obviously, finding a person with integrity who's also willing to say, look, I don't know, um, and, and refer out. And so the narrative that I feel that's going to have to change, you know, in our world, which is my mission and passion and purpose is to start is to change the conversation of responsibility, root cause, and then, and then the data, and then looking at all the systems, you know, upside down in a way that we have to look at, you know, structure as one of the things that have, has to happen first. And so um, this is an opportunity, this new millennium to having different conversations, to be working together with amazing individuals like yourselves so that we can collectively guide, you know, the people that are hurting uh, to optimize their health. Um, so yeah, join me on this cause. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's wrap it up. Uh, Daniel um, and Kendra, Kendra first to you. Uh, how do people find you? At Kendra Kanoy on Facebook, Instagram, and KendraKanoy.com. And excited to connect with anyone out there suffering with joint pain, whether it's a brand new thing or whether you have a joint replacement scheduled. It's never too late. And there, there is another way. So I'm I'm eager to to continue spreading that word. So thanks for having me here. I love it. Daniel? Everyone can head to naturalseizurecontrol.com where they can find a masterclass video with more information or join our newsletter or private Facebook group or reach out to me directly. I'd love to answer questions and help as many people as I can. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you both. It's been a great honor once again to have you on the Doctor's Guide podcast, Raw and Unfiltered, you know, bringing to you through role-playing the process by which you can make better decisions for yourself. And it's not just about selling a particular product. In fact, you know, if you can uh, take action yourself and changing your lifestyle, making better choices, that's ultimately going to play out much better for you in the long term. You know, and as we've discussed here, um, you know, the pain is a signal. It's not going to uh, resolve right away. It's going to take some time, requires your commitment, but also requires you to find the right people like Daniel and Kendra. Thank you so much. And we will be back.